Hi, I'm Gerald, and I'll be Hamlet. I'm Jed, and I'll be Gertrude. I'm both Ophelia and Natasha. The context of the scene is in between Act 5, Scene 1, and Act 5, Scene 2. And this is after uh, Ophelia's funeral at the grave. Oh, how the misery has come upon me. How the misery of my soul has consumed the backbone. What is the remedy that will reveal the answer to that question? How can I be able to recover from this melancholy, from this forgoing era of corrupt, broken, and disloyal kingdom? Do people recover, or do they reform? All of is lost, but the love, the love has been altered. Soft, who's there? My dear Hamlet, what worries thee? What makes the hair upon thy brows furrow? What attracts the dark cloud hanging over thy head? The shadows and lines on thy face alter thy countenance into things strange. Nothing worries thee, my dear mother, now. What brings you to the high chambers? Give me the honor of the presence. Come be worried, Hamlet. I'm crazy. Tell me. Get, mother. I'm not worried. Just ponder me. What about me, Hamlet? Life or death? Love or hate? Tis about your beloved Ophelia? I'm indeed sorry for the loss. I recognize your love for her as true. But I pray thee, as with thy father's death, we must learn to let it go, must we not? I'm not your sweet Hamlet, dear mother. You are in far too occupied with thy husband. That the thought of comforting your sweet Hamlet doth slip thy mind after my father and thy husband died. So I cannot be sweet, my life is bitter. And I cannot love, my living hate. Oh, my sweet, my son, my son. I want you to take a stance on my own. I know. I know who I'll ever have another to share my burden with. Lend me thy ear but for a short time. When I have bore the kingdom's air, you, in the stillness of the night, with only the moon and the stars as light and witness, I have carried thee in my arms with the utmost care. I have caressed thy cheeks. I've held thine hands in my own, and I knew in my breast that thou wast the fruit of our love, and that God had given me as my son, and I as thy mother. But the thoughts that rack your mind are the most foreign and complex for my understanding, as with the composition of the boundless stars, and the reflection of the sunlight upon the moon, and the hymn I know I have done thee wrong with my transgressions and crimes, and so I beseech you my sincerest apology. I am sorry for neglecting now in your time of need, when my father and my husband died. But you must understand, as a queen, I have to be dry eyed while the kingdom has sorrow and pain in her eyes. I am sending you with presence and comfort now. For I know that your affections for Ophelia weigh heavier than your affections, and that thou did love Ophelia. I beg thee, dear Hamlet, unmask thyself, tear down thy walls, and be token me your deepest thoughts, for I doth nothing but worry about my gentle son. Press thy cheeks. As a queen, you have to be cry eyed while the. Softly now, what is my quarters?
Thou truth be a liar, never doubt I love. Oh, dear heavens, no! Dear, is this the letter? The letter upon which you poured your heart and soul through words most intricate to fair Ophelia? The letter whose pages bleed of ink and sincerity, of marks and love? What? From where did this letter come? From, from the heavens? Perhaps blown by the winds of Violas? Take that leap, please. Thy warrior will make it home. Son, if thou only wishes more time for thy thoughts to ponder, I must oblige. But you must know, I will leave with a heavy heart. Speak no more. Just leave. Feel it? Oh, I missed you. Thy voice soothed me in this time of need. My, my voice, my lord? I know not what thou speakest of. Thy, thy words flatter me too much for my own good. And I shall speak with such ponderous words. But thou didst not know the lie. Oh, fair Ophelia, I truly apologize for this feeling, and yet thou must know. There's no need for such words. For I have not come to talk. Plague thy mind for too long. With this love letter, why have you brought it back to me? To remind me of thy affection for me. When I still have breath and warmth. I now realize that I have been persuaded one too many times. But I was too afraid to challenge it. For that, I am burdened with a deep regret for neglecting, denying my own feelings. But I was never truly worthy, worthy of thy love. I even denied that I wrote this very love letter. I cannot fathom how you left this world so abruptly that I never even had the chance to say goodbye. True, just how you treated me. But I did not realize thy motives, or have gained knowledge of thy plotted revenge against King Claudius. It is not irrational, <laughs> for he does wear the shape of a marigold in bloom, and thy will barbary that I realize your mistreatment of me was misconstrued. But what thou speaks of no longer racks my brain. The matter now is why you appear in front of my eyes. Do and your rational reason is me. Do not I over it. For I have come to dispel thy words of certain things, my lord. I have come to calm thy mind with the raging waves that continuously crash into the of thy subconscious. Starting with me. Thy words and thy actions at the time I could neither comprehend nor apprehend, for you did all but deny me the light to guide me through the murky waters. But now that I have grasped a sliver of understanding, I can only have fathom how my own children to carry the world. Thy like touch is not a mask. I truly do empathize with it. But something else gnaws at my mind. My heart and my soul. Such as thy acts including what thou hast done to my father. I have looked past it in understanding, but dost thou not realize what has been started? You have shrouded and drowned thy heart in thoughts of nothing but revenge because of thy dear father's murder. No, my dear father is dead because of thee. Do not expect anything less than what thyself thinks and desires to put into action. Because canst thou not see that it is, and always will be, a never-ending cycle, like that of the moon? Yes, as though it is as inconsist inconsistent as the phases, it shall also be as predictable. Canst thou not see this, my lord? Forgive me, my lord. I should not have spoken to thee that way. I pray thee thou also forgives me when I turn my blushed cheek away from thy dulling eyes. Be thought my lord was nothing but an errant knave, and I an anemone. That thy tenders of affection was of sweet nothing, offered with buttercups. I did love thee, ere and I do wholly forgive, but my cold, cold, Body and beating heart. <laughs> oh, how we 
could have frolicked in the field of ambrosias. Nonetheless, I hope these words of mine have calmed the rapid meandering streams of thy mind's thoughts as they plunge into the ocean of, life, of understanding. Adieu, sweet time. Hello. Hey. Not part of the suit. This love letter. I hold in my bloody fingers. I loathe. It recalls memories. She has left. Left to the stars, the glory of beauty, not fire. She will never return to the flames of Denmark. Oh, the deeds are fulfilled, the change, the unforgiving hands of Father Time. Why inhale and exhale when I expend lives and my lethargic life every sunrise? My heart still beats, but my heart stops from no one because my dear love is gone. When I've loved once, and always forever will. She was manipulated. I was manipulated. Mistreated, not filled with melancholy. All because of a jeopardizing deed. A father killed by my bloody blade. My father, deafened by death and holy drink. A mother who believes I went wild. And a father, an unworthy king, whose ears was here. Misery. Of iniquity. For the misery of iniquity. For the history yes, of iniquity. When it all? It all falls down. I'm telling you all. It. It all falls down. Scene.